We've been here for five or six generations. My dad was born and raised here, just like I was. And he farmed all his life. But I've been farming ever since I was nine years old. <laughs> been a long time. You know, our, our family goes back uh, about six generations of, of coal miners working underground coal miners. Uh, myself, I spent uh, approximately 30 years uh, working in underground coal mines. My family is in the oyster business where I'm actually the fourth generation. That's all we do is fish oysters and uh, sell oysters. It's, it's not a job, it's, um, it's a way of life. I see, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to cry. But it's just, um, it just hurts so much. <laughs> I've got to compose myself. Each year, taxpayers fork over about $20 billion in farm subsidies to help keep America's farms up and running. But over the years, more and more of the payments have gone to Fortune 500 companies, the wealthy, and even members of Congress. The big corporation farmers, they're getting that subsidy payment and turning around and coming over my area and buying my ground. And they outbid you because they've got the money. And, and we've got to get rid of these subsidy payments to these uh, big time farmers because they're just pushing us out, pushing us out all the time. And that's what's happening to all the smaller farmers. At least, well, 50% of my neighbors are gone. Unless something changes to bring people back onto the land, there are gonna be huge corporations farming this land just like there are raising our hogs and our chickens. So if it's a corporation related to agriculture, of course, with their huge ability to finance a congressman's reelection campaign, it's human nature. There's no doubt that large amounts of money are going to impact the, the decisions a congressman makes more times than not. It all began with a boom. April 20th, just before 10 p.m., the first explosion aboard the Deepwater Horizon. The oil rig, about 50 miles offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, is spitting fire. You can see the natural gas that's burning off there, down one mile and then two miles down in through the bedrock. That's where they punched that hole that got out of control. Along Louisiana's coast, so many people now believe an oil disaster on shore is a matter not of if, but when. All the leases that we had access to, uh, we had oysters on, were, uh, were shut down. We didn't have any more oysters to sell. We thought Hurricane Katrina was uh, the biggest disaster we would ever have to experience. But with this, because of the oil spill, because of the closures, because of the uncertainty of the wholesomeness of the fish and the uh, oysters, we don't know when you know, and if we'll be able to um, start fishing anytime soon. So that makes it, uh, economically, makes it a whole, whole lot harder than uh, Hurricane Katrina. This, we know, is not uh, an act of God. It was a man-made disaster. And it could have been, definitely have been avoided. And that makes everybody in the community a lot angrier. Senator Vitter did receive uh, over $400,000 in campaign contributions from Big Oil. And I know he's more likely to not vote against any regulations that the oil companies would have put in front of them. I think that's a given in today's politics, that um, that's the reason why they make the big campaign contributions. Well, it was around three o'clock this afternoon when an explosion rocked a coal mine in Whitesville, West Virginia. A huge underground explosion blamed on methane gas kills over two dozen coal miners. Possibly the worst U.S. mine accident in more than 25 years. The questionable safety record of mine owners, Massey Energy Company. The first thing that we would do uh, at a Massey Mines was we would take down our line curtain. And your line curtain is your source of ventilation. And the only reason they did that was in, to increase production. Without a doubt, I can say that uh, the mine disaster happened in April, April 5th, that killed 29 people. Uh, you know, they was having major ventilation problems. So all 29 men that was in that mines died. Um, 
two of them, like I said, you know, were co-workers of mine. And it's, you know, you don't get over something like this. There was a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness. And then it turned, it turned to anger. Uh, knowing, you know, how Massey puts profits above people's safety. In the last 10 years, Massey Energy has had 52 employees killed in their underground mines. 52 miners. That's unheard of. And knowing that, you know, this mines was dangerous, it had violations, it had like uh, 100 some violations since the first of the year. How was this mines, uh, how was it allowed to keep operating with this type of uh, violations? It's as high level house members that are from coal producing counties that, you know, are getting money from the coal industry. And, you know, they uh, influence the rest of the legislature in order to bend the laws, bend the rules in favor of the coal industry. Uh, they don't care about the communities. They don't care who has to suffer as long as the coal is being produced. The corporations are buying the government more and more every day because they're the ones that's got all the money. We have to stop this corporate financing. This is something that, that we need to stop. Uh, and we need to, to have more public financing to put them on the same level to where they can uh, compete with these lobbyists from the coal industry. I definitely feel that um, if uh, we had campaign finance reform that was truly effective, that there would be a big change in the regulations in the oil industry and uh, in a lot of other industries too, as far as safety, uh, in for the environment, for the uh, individual workers, for the general public, it would, um, I believe it, it, it's something that really needs to be done. When they influence politicians like this, well, yeah, they're going to take the money, they're going to do favors for them, and, you know, the people's going to pay the price for it. Campaign finance reform, yeah, I'm, I'm really for that. I think in the long run, we would have um, real public servants and that are willing to give of themselves for, for the people and not people that, that are just looking to get rich.